Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We have now completed the processing of the maxillary mandibular denture by curing the flasks in 165 degree Fahrenheit water for 12 hours and we are now ready to deflask the dentures. I have already removed this from the water and, ha and let it cool down to room temperature and it's important to do this. If you were to remove the denture while it was still quite warm you could distort the dentures. So to begin with we'll remove the flask from the flask press. place them in front of them. Now at this point we will be going to a device called a Hanaw ejector and prior to doing this you have to remove the top plate from the flask and I will do this first with the lower. You simply pry it off with a screwdriver. Now as you can see we are looking at the third pour or the last pour that we made. Now I will show you the Hanaw ejector. It is simply a device that easily allows us to remove the stone from the flask. It has a movable plate that you can place up and down. And I'd like to show you that previously we mentioned that there are slots inside of these flasks. And we use these in ejecting the stone from the flask. Now, to begin with, you place the bottom ring, the bottom of the flask, inside of the ejector. And we use these large screwdriver-like devices to fit into the keys. And then you simply pry it. And as you see, the top, excuse me, the bottom half of the flask is separated from the flask. We remove this and the ring, place it back into our ejector. This time we will be using the top half to place against the plate and we can move that down. We'd like to leave a little bit of clearance. Again, we place the ejectors near the grooves and this time we will pry up and as you see the flask is now completely separated from the stone. I will go ahead and do this now with the maxillary flask. Again we pry the top off, place it back into the ejector, again placing the ring first, getting a slight amount of clearance. Putting our ejector in the grooves and simply pressing up hard. We'll remove this section and the ring. And again, we will go back placing the top of the flask against the plate. the stone portion of our flask. Now at this point, we would like to separate this without breaking the denture. And to begin with, we will remove the third pour, and this can be done by gently tapping. This will sometimes slip the third pour off of our stone. As you remember, this was the last pour that we made and you can see the indentations of the teeth at this point. 
Now I'm going to also do that with the mandibular glass. Most of the time this third pour will come off quite easily because we did use the soap separator. Now from this point, we use a combination of tapping with the hammer or using a saw and a laboratory knife. To begin with, the first pour is generally very easily removed from the, from the model. And it's important to try to retrieve the master cast with the denture intact. And I'll explain why later. This for, first pour will generally peel off quite easily from our master cast. Now we don't want to tap too hard because you would then be taking a chance of breaking the master cast and the denture. I've removed most of the first pour from our master cast, which you see exposed. Now at this point, it's best to make a notch in the second pour in a line with the incisal edges of the teeth. And I'll do that right here. And you can do this on both sides. Essentially, you're, you're creating a fracture line, and then you can place your laboratory knife in this groove and crack away the stone from the cured denture. It comes off quite easily. Now, the reason this is separating this way is we went to a great deal of difficulty in flasking this very carefully, and if you do it carefully, this part is quite easy to do. Now, you can tap the tongue space, and it will usually come out in one portion. So now you see we have retrieved the denture still attached to our master cast. Now at this point you can go back and remove all the excesses from the master cast and you can clear out the grooves. And I'm going to set this one aside while I do the maxillary denture. This is a messy procedure, and you'd like to do it in a work area that's designed to work with plaster. Now again, we have the maxillary denture, and I'm going to do this the same way. I'm going to try and remove most of the first pour. Now, the first pour was made with model plaster. And of course, model plaster is very soft. And you see it quite easily breaks away from the master cast. Now again, I will take the saw, put a groove in a line with the incisal edges of the teeth. Now this does not always work the first time. Sometimes we have to do this again and again, but you simply place the knife in there and break it away from the denture, as you can see here. And on the other side, we'll proceed. Now you notice that this breaks away quite easily, and the reason it does that is because we used half model plaster and half stone. So it's a little bit softer than if we had used stone totally. Now again, the palatal portion will come out very easily if you just tap. And generally, it will come out in one segment. If it does not come out readily, then you may want to make a groove in the palate and use a laboratory knife to fracture it away. Now again, I'm going to, you notice here, this came off quite simply this time. Most of the time, it'll peel right off. Now at this point, you notice the dentures are attached to our master cast. 
Now, for our purposes in this course, we are going to leave them attached to the cast for a short time because we are going to remount our dentures doing a post-processing remount. I am not going to demonstrate here how we remove the denture from the master cast, although it is very simple. Generally, we will take them to a model trimmer and trim the excess material from the underside of the denture, the tissue side of the denture, and then we use a shell blaster to remove the rest of the stone from the inside of the denture. So I think you've seen here a relatively messy procedure, but a necessary one, to remove the dentures from the processing flasks. And this is a simple procedure, but an important one, because if you were to be too aggressive, you might break the denture. Now we will go on to finishing the denture in our next demonstration. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.